Okay, this sermon's entitled, Reasons Why We Should Read the Bible. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 134 reads, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary, and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. Now, a lot of people... They read the Bible because they feel like they have to, or they feel like they should be reading it because it's some type of obligation that needs to be fulfilled in their life. Some people read it in a perfunctory manner. They may read it for like 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day or whatever, and it becomes like you know, some type of method of rote. You're reading the Bible and, you know, as, a, as a habit or, or as a habituality. But I believe that we need to understand that there are reasons why we should be reading the Bible, and, and we should view the Bible as, as different than other books. It's not just any arbitrary book or arbitrary textbook. So I believe there are lots of reasons why we should read the Bible. Number one, we gain wisdom from reading the Bible. Let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 2. It reads, My son, if thou wilt perceive, if thou wilt perceive my words, and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to, not, to understanding, Yea, if thou criest at their knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Now, this tells us that we should be seeking after knowledge, and it tells us how we should be seeking after it. We should be viewing knowledge or viewing wisdom as something as you know priceless as silver. So we shouldn't be looking at the Bible as just a, a bland book filled with a bunch of facts, we should look at the Bible as you know a treasure trove of wisdom. And we should be seeking God's wisdom all the time. And if we do seek for wisdom, we will find the knowledge of God, according to verse 5. Okay, verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So, the first reason we should read the Bible is to gain wisdom. Okay, there's nothing wrong with having you know, a, an, an abundant acquisition of knowledge. Okay, the second reason is so we can get to know God better. See, as believers in Christ, we are children of God. And that means we have a relationship with God. It's our, <clears throat> it's our, it's our privilege to get to know God better. Turn over to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And let's take a look at a couple verses here. See, a lot of people they think that reading the, reading the Bible is just it's just a you know a trifle activity. It's it's not anything big. But see, that's what they're they're totally deluded. They're disillusioned. They have no idea what they're talking about because number one, reading the Bible is it's a life changing you know activity. James chapter four. Let's start off with verse seven. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, I believe the devil is doing everything he can. The devil is is basically <clears throat> working in overdrive to sit there and get people, you know, derailed from their Christian faith, to get people sidetracked, to get people so preoccupied with the the junk of this world, so to speak. He'll do anything to keep people away from the Bible. That's why it says to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, look at verse eight. It tells us to draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, God is you know, perfectly holy and righteous. That's why it's hard to approach God's word if we're living in constant sin, constant unrepentant sin. That's why it's important that we, we do clean up our lives. Now, this is not for salvation, of course. Salvation is completely by grace, but this is a, like a post-salvation you know, type activity that we should be doing on a daily basis. So, and the Bible says if we draw nigh to God, that means draw, draw near to God, he will draw near to us. So that's the second reason. The third reason is we need to have an answer. There are going to be lots of skeptics and naysayers out there, a lot of, you know, agnostics and atheists, these stupid hellbound, you know, idiots is what I call them. And that's what they are. The Bible calls them fools, but there are going to be lots of people out there that will deem that the Christian faith is mythical and apocryphal and totally you know, fallacious and totally fictitious and totally superstitious, and they're going to try to challenge our faith. And they might try to stump us with some type of crazy, you know, labyrinthine question. And that we need to be ready at all times to give an answer. We see this in 1 Peter chapter 3. 
First Peter chapter 3, look at verse 15, it reads, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, what this tells us is to be ready at all times. The best way to be ready is to just read the Bible, you know, copiously. Read it all the time, and, and just study it, and then you will find the answer, because the answer is contained in God's Word. Now, the next reason we should read the Bible is so that we can keep God's Word fresh in our minds. We, we, when we try to memorize the Bible, we need to be reading it on a daily basis. And we see this in Hebrews chapter uh, 2, ver- in verse 1, it reads, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, this actually means drift away from us. Anytime you're, you're reading something over and over again, repetitively, you are inculcating these facts into your mind. And we should be repeating them, like I said, over and over again. And any time you stop reading the Bible for a certain period of time, you are going to let God's Word slip away. So that's why it's important that we read it every single day. The next reason is so that we will have victory over sin. Turn back to um, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Let's take a look at a couple verses here. Let's start off with, um, let's see, verse 10 it reads, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11, Thy word have I hidden mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Now, one of the ways that reading the Bible keeps you away from sin is, number one, it, it, it gives you something to do. You're filling your time up with something wholesome. You know, something you know edifying. Reading God's word will keep you away from sin, because number one, the word of God is pure. It's like wa- oil and water. They're immiscible. They do not mix. They're incompatible. So whenever you read God's word, it, it actually makes you want to askew or re- repudiate sin. And basically, this is like this is the other way around as well. Whenever you're living in sin, you don't want anything to do with God's word. People that are not saved, they don't want anything to do with God's word either. Okay, but once a person gets saved, they have the Holy Spirit indwelling them, and then you know they can understand God's word and they can have a, an entire you know perception modification when it comes to how they how they view God's word. The unsaved look at it as, you know, just a rule book or whatever. The saved, we see it as, you know, something that we need on a daily basis. We can actually liken God's word to, you know, healthy food. It's something we need. It's something we are hungry for. It's something we need to grow, you know, thereby. So we should see God's word as, you know, something totally, totally winsome and totally um, desirable as believers in Christ. And it says that God's word, if we hide, if we hide it in our heart, will keep us away from sinning. And I've noticed that when people stop reading God's Word, they're more inclined t- to sin. They slip up a lot easier. And that's just the way it is. So, see here, another reason to read God's Word is to keep us, you know, victors over sin on a daily basis. Now, let's take a look at another verse in the same portion of, of Scripture. Another reason why we should read the Bible is so that we can preach. You cannot preach if you don't have God's Word. And that's why we should read it all the time, because God wants us to preach. He doesn't want us to be silent you know, disciples, and just keep keep his word to ourselves, and then live and then go on with our lives. He doesn't want that. We are called to preach. We see many passages that talk about that in the New Testament, but right here in, in Psalm one nineteen, we see a passage that makes it very clear that one of the reasons why we should read God's word is so that we can you know tell others about it. And we see this in verse uh, twenty seven. It says, "Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works." So you read God's word, you know, learn it, and can tell others. That's preaching about the good news of the gospel. And if a person's not, like I said, if a person's not saved, none of this is going to make any sense to them. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved, because the unsaved will die and go to hell. They are condemned already, the Bible says. So if you're not saved, you need to understand that you're a sinner. You cannot save yourself by any means. The Bible says in Titus 3.5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. We, we, we need to trust in Jesus Christ. He's the Savior. He died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. He was buried, then he rose again three days later. And that's what saves us. It's what he did. And the Bible says we have to believe on him. That means we have to trust him completely for our salvation. It's very simple. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John 3.36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's, you put faith in Christ, 
and you're saved forever. And you have eternal life and eternal security. And then after this, we should grow. So that the final reason why we should read God's Word is, is to help us grow. God wants us to grow as believers. So let's turn over to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and let's take a look at the first couple verses. It says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Some people may be wondering a point of growth. Why can't we just be saved and that's it? Well, you can be saved and that's it. That's what the Bible teaches. But God desires for us to grow. God wants us to come to spiritual maturity. He wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to, pro- to produce things like sermons and books and whatnot. He wants us to be a soul winner. And we cannot do this without growth. And we cannot grow without the Word of God. That's why we have to have the Word of God on a daily basis. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your, your clear Word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.